great morning. Let's get it, you guys. If you guys can throw in the chat bar your name, where you're from. You know, and one thing you're grateful for on this Monday, it's 16 days left in October, you guys. We just came out of halftime. We just started the third quarter. Like, how you used to come out of the halftime determines the end of the game. How you determine the end of the game, guess what? Is whether you win or not, right? So put your name, where you're from. And one thing you're grateful for, for me, I'm grateful for new levels of fitness, right? We just found this new gym, and it's been pushing me like crazy. And <clears throat> like today, I felt in my workout a depth of having to push. I haven't felt in a while. We did leg day, right? I got to the last part of this. Uh, this thing is called the pit shark. And uh, we were doing five second holds. I told him, yo, give me 10 seconds on the last one. And it was one where I couldn't push up with the regular push. And if you know who C.T. Fletcher is, he's the guy that talks about, you know, going deep into the muscle and commanding your muscles to grow. And he talks about a deeper level. And I felt when I was trying to do the regular push, it didn't get it done. And then I said, you got to go one level deeper. And I said, I got to find it, right? And I grunt when I'm in the gym. So Rox is looking at me weird, but it's all right. Because the, the deeper you. level got it done. And I say that because you guys all have a deeper level. You guys all have more that you're capable of. You're like an iceberg, right? You can only see 10% of the iceberg up top. There's 90% below. And that's what we're tapping to in here in Triple M. We're going to be hearing some mindset from our, our business philosopher, our mentor, Jim Rohn, who, if you don't know, he mentored Mark Hughes, the founder of Herbalife. He mentored Tony Robbins. He's one of the founders of Person Development. And just a really wise guy, right? Changed lives until the day he passed. Really, really incredible. So he's going to be talking about time management. How to make the most out of your time. Because I'm reading this book by uh, Oprah Winfrey. And she touches on this a few times. It's called Own It. She said, your time is you. So be careful how you use your time. Because ultimately, your time is you. How you spend it, who you spend it with, what you spend it on is you. So be very wise with it. So I thought it was really powerful. Let's get into this video. Shout out to everybody in the chats. I see Mar from Los Angeles, Myra from Phoenix, Diavana from Alabama. Nice. Alexis from Tampa. Steven from Fort Lauderdale. Let's get it. Thankful for the meditation. Next level. Diavana is thankful for her family. I love it, y'all. Keep it up. Keeper from Bartlesville, Oklahoma in the building. Let's get it. What is one thing you're grateful for? Health. Health. And Without that, health, you don't have anything. That's true, right? All right, well, let's get into it. Without further ado, get your notebooks out. Let's get into Jim Rohn talking about time management. And remember, we're going to get some takeaways at the end. If you're at work and can't share live, no problem. Put it in the chat. We'll get a few shares also from the chat. So give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you can hear this. Okay. I'm pushing the Bible. I'm pushing vitamins. I'm doing, I'm doing good today. So... The key is time is precious. Now let me give you Bill Bailey's description of time. Life is not just the passing of time. Life is not just the passing of time. Life is a collection of experiences. Their frequency. And their intensity. Life is not just watching the clock tick away. Life is a collection of experiences. Their intensity, their frequency. When my friend Mark died at age 44, someone says, that's young to die. But what if he lived four lifetimes in one? It might not be too young. So here's what it, whatever the span of your life turns out to be, here's what you want to fill it up with, experiences and the intensity of those experiences. But now let's talk about the management of time. Here's one of the best ones we covered earlier. When should you start building this hotel? Answer as soon as you have it finished. Now jot this one down on time management. When should you start the day? As soon as you have it finished. Plan the day the best you can. Leaving plenty of room for improvising and surprises and all the stuff that happens during the course of the day. But if you've planned a good productive day, now you start that day, you can't believe how much more valuable your time will be. 
Don't start the day until you have it finished. Now here's the next one. Don't start the week until you've had it finished. Now to lay out a week is a pretty good challenge. Next, don't start the month until you have it finished. The places to go and the people to see and the productivity and the sales and the customers and the development and all the rest of what you want to accomplish during the course of 30 days. Don't start the month till it's finished. And then here's the big one. This is really challenging. Don't start the year until you have it finished. To the best of your ability. It can't be finished like minute by minute. But in terms of the sweep of what you want to accomplish in the year 2002, make sure that that's set and ready to go by the time January 1st rolls around. And it might get all upset, and it might get torn up and you do a new and you make so much progress the first 90 days that now you've got, you've multiplied it all by two by three. Because that happened to me. I thought, wow, here's how, this is gonna be a great year. By the time I'd finished the third month, I'm rolling, I'm soaring. So many things are happening, I revised my whole year's plan. Okay. Now, jot this down, approaches to the management of time. Here's the first one. Ignore the subject. I mean, that's good advice. Don't let anything overly bug you. Because you remember now, you don't have to do anything. Someone says, well, I gotta get a handle on my time. The answer is no, you don't. If you want to let it all go, you can let it all go. I mean, this is good advice. Somebody says, you ought, you ought, you ought. Jot this down, ignore all the you oughts, or you should, only if they're giving general information, we should. It's better to say if you're teaching, we should, not you should, we should. Then you let me listen in without it being too confrontational. If everyone did this, see, that'd be great. And then you give a person a chance to choose to do it or not to do it. But when you start the you ought, you ought, now see if I don't, now see we got some tension and maybe some problems. So you ought seem to always create problems. When you're talking to your kids, you say, no, if kids would do this, not always saying if you did this, if you did this, life would be better, but if kids did this, life would be better. It's like making a little talk and letting them listen in. And then it's a little less confrontational. It gives us a choice. In one of my seminars, here's what I teach. All life form strives to the max of its potential except human beings. All life form strives to the max of its potential except human beings. How tall will a tree grow? As tall as it possibly can. You never heard of a tree growing half as high as it could. No, trees don't grow half. A tree drives its roots as deep as it can, reaches as high as it can, produces every leaf it can, every fruit it possibly can. To the max, every life form strives to the max, except human beings. Now, why not human beings? Jot this down. You've been given the dignity of choice. You're not a robot. You don't have to repeat this year the same as last year. You can tear up last year's plan, develop a new plan. So, the dignity of being a human being. Now, here's the choice on being a human being. To be part of all we were meant to be, or to be all. To strive for all, or half, or part, or some. The choice is up to you to develop one skill or ten skills. Someone says, well, I'd be happy with just one more language. Well, some say, hey, I'm going to learn six or seven. And this is all a matter of choice. And when someone says, no, you ought to learn four, you've got to resist all that. Because this is personal dignity. And you don't want to destroy someone's dignity by, by doing all the oughts and they feel reluctant to do it. Now we've got problems. So if you want to, just ignore this subject on time management. Now here's the next one. Step down to something easier. The guy's in sales, and he says, oh, I want to own the company. Finally owns the company. Now he's got no time to play golf. He said, when I was in sales, I was making big money playing golf three days a week. Heck with this owning something. 
Heck with managing. My life was never my own after I started to manage. I'm going back to sales. See, this is the key. If you're getting too pressed, you might consider stepping down to something with a little easier time pressure. Little girl says to her mother, Daddy comes home, brings his briefcase and pats me on the head and says hello, disappears and works on his papers. How come my daddy doesn't play with me? And her mother said, look, your daddy loves you very much, but he has, he's so busy at work, he can't get it all done, he has to bring it home. He loves you, but that's why he can't play with you. And the little girl said, why don't they just put him in a slower group? <laughs> so, jot this down now. If you don't have time for your kids, you might consider joining a slower group. Remember when I said some things I went for cost me too much? So reconsider. Next key to time management. And that's work longer and harder. But see, there's a limit to that. I almost lost my health the first year. I went so crazy about personal development and achievement. I just went bonkers. You know, I told you I was skinny. By the end of that first year, I was a walking shadow. And then it suddenly occurred to me, what if I got rich and too ill to spend it? I mean, that was a shocker. So I started, you know, developing a little more reasonable. Because I said, if 12 hours won't do it, I'll work 14. If that won't do it, I'll work 18. I mean, how many hours it takes. And sure enough, it, it cost me too much. So see, working longer and harder for some might be appropriate. You know, if you're just sitting around not doing that much, this might be good, work longer and harder. But you can only work so hard Here's the key, not to work harder, but smarter. When you've worked as hard as you can, doing the best you can in terms of physical output in the time, reasonable time. Now here's the ultimate in the management of time, and that is you simply become more skillful. When I first got into sales, you know, I was around people that could get, you know, nine out of 10, eight out of 10. And when I first started, I could only get one out of 10. But here's what I did. I worked around the clock, around the clock, so that I would make up in numbers what I lacked in skill. That's good in sales. You got to jot that down. When you're new, you make up in numbers what you lack in skill. Now, when you become more skillful, the numbers can go down because now your, your persuasive ability and all of that is now so high that you don't need to put as many numbers out. But at first, if you want to compete or if you want to really get good, you've got to put in the numbers. But if you get more from yourself, develop more of yourself, now the time management becomes an easier task. Now here's the next thing. Either you run the project or it runs you. I've found out when you start something, at first you're in charge. All of a sudden, a year later, it's in charge. Some of the companies I started, I'm telling you, I'm in control. A couple of years later, I'm out of control. At first, I've got it on the run. Two years later, it's got me on the run. Haven't got enough time. I'm dizzy with trying to get it all done. So here's part of the key, and that's to get in charge. Say, I'm going to take charge of my health. One of my albums is entitled, Take Charge of Your Life. Take charge of your time. Take charge of your resources, which we're going to talk about next. Take charge of your health. You're the one that's responsible for it. It's not a requirement of society that you not have a heart attack and take care of your family. That's not a requirement of society, but you must make it a requirement of yourself. Society doesn't require that you build a financial wall around your family nothing can get through. That's not a requirement of society. It's a requirement you impose on yourself to build a financial wall around your family nothing can get through. So impose on yourself this self-development of being in charge, taking charge of your life and your health and your future and your responsibilities and all the rest. Man, Jim is dropping a lot of nuggets. Fired up, fired up. So that video is Jim Rohn, How to Work Smarter Time Management. So uh, I'm gonna share a few of my top takeaways. <clears throat> so I'll be honest, man, this is one of my favorites. Jim is one of the wisest teachers that I personally learned from. And uh, I'll tell you, so many on here, right? So I'm going to start with, when should you start the day? 
you know, and it's cool because I actually have this right here. Every night or at a minimum in the morning, usually at night, 90% of the night before, I write down my perfect day for the next day. So I'm going to put this close, right? Because this is a game changer. Because there's two types of people. No, actually, there's three types of people. There's one kind of person wakes up, does whatever the wind takes them to. Oh, I feel like it. I don't feel like it. I'm, 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 in, I'm motivated. I'm not motivated. Go wherever. That's one kind of person. They end up where they don't want to end up. Why? Because if you put a boat in the water and let the air take it, wind take it, it's going to go to a random place. You never want to go to a random place. Number two person is, I want to get things done. I'm, I think a plan would help. Let me wake up and then go with a plan I think about. So they're waking up, thinking, then executing. So it's kind of like if you were playing on the Lakers and in the first quarter tried to make your game plan you would not be winning championships. You would be losing every game. Why? Because if you're trying to think you can't execute, that's the second person. Better than the first, but not going to really get the output you want. So what I try to do, because I find value in it, is the night before I think about the next day or minimum in the morning early, what would be my perfect day? Like if I could make my day any way I want, what would it be like? Would I get my workout in? Would I get my personal development in? How many new clients will we get? How many new distributors will we get if we're, you know, doing the business? You know, how many, how much would I read? You know, if I'm working a job, if we're working a job, how would work go? How would, you know, now I time with family go? Everything, whatever you want, quality time. You know, for us in Herbalife as distributors, I put how many business presentations we're going to have, how many new preferred members we're going to have, you know, some of our DMO work, how many conversations we're going to have. The perfect day. Do we get it done every day? No. But when we wake up in the morning, we just execute. Instead of thinking, then executing. There's a difference. That split second can be all the difference. When we wake up in the morning, we know what we're executing on because we've already created the plan. So that is crucial. And then I'll, I can tell the difference in my week the more of these days I have filled out. If I have less of these days filled out, I know I'm not as focused, right? When they're all blocked in, I know I'm, I'm on it, laser focus. I'm compounding weeks together. So don't start your day until you got to finish. I thought that was powerful. And then uh, I really liked uh, the last part. It was like, you know what? The requirements of society are not that you be healthy, be wealthy, or be independent, right? Society doesn't require that you don't have a heart attack. Society doesn't require that you become financially free. Society doesn't require any of that. Who's got to require it? It's got to be you, right? It's got to come from within you. It's kind of like what I was talking about in the beginning. You got to go deeper in yourself because you want more for you. But as Jim said, we've been given the gift of choice. You don't have to do it. And that's why you see so many people not do it. But like he says, if you can become the best you can, why not go for it? Why not go for it? And I, I'll give you this secret. It's not because you can't do it. This is why. And I want you to ask yourself this question and see what voice pops up when I ask it. Just, just try this exercise. Ask the question in your head and see what comes back. Why can't you have more? And whatever that voice that pops up, that's what's called your limiting belief. So your limiting belief is something that you picked up along the way because as, you know, young adults, or sorry, as kids, we are only born with two things innately, the fear of falling and the fear of loud noises. That's it. Everything else is learned. You're scared of the dark, you know, your language, how to walk. Everything else is learned. So you learn some things like, hey, people who look like us don't make that kind of money. Money doesn't grow on trees. What do you think? You know, you can have this. People who come from where we live don't live like that. You got to work really, really hard. And maybe one day later down the road, you'll get it. You can't have it now. If you get too much money, you're bad. Rich people are greedy. They're bad. They're distrustful. You know, for me, one of the things was the tax man, right? I didn't want to be in the government's eye too much because if you make more money, the tax man come looking. I had all these things, right? We all have them. And here's how a clue you know you have them. Because you might be saying, well, you know, I don't have those. This is how you know you have them. If you're not where you want to be. Because if you had 
if you didn't have anything, you'd be there. Because you are where you are now, because you believed you could be there. And then from here to where you want to be is just a few more belief structures. And then here's a tip on how to change your belief structures. A, get around a group of people. That's what you're doing here on Triple M. You know, that's what you're doing as a part of the Herbalife community, whether you're a client, whether you're a distributor. If you're going to the events, leadership development weekend this month, right? If you already had her, if you got yours coming up, monthly events, your, your team and client chats, getting around people that think different, give you insights, because that's how you learned it in the first place, was you were around people that thought a certain way. Now, you've got to choose who to be around to think a certain way. You didn't really get to choose when you grew up, right? Now you can choose. That's the biggest difference. So, fired up. Rocks, drop some nuggets on us. What's up, you guys? Happy freaking Monday. All right, so some of my takeaways. I mean, I really love the very last one that kind of like uh, Aubrey hit on, and he talked about taking charge of your life. You know, that's really what it all comes down to, taking charge of your health, taking charge of the way that you feel, taking charge of your like your life, you know? And a lot of the times, I know for me in the past before, it was so hard to take personal responsibility over my life. And it was just kind of like that whole thing of drifting, you know? It was just kind of like waking up and I'm just going to do this and that's it. Why? Because really taking full ownership and taking responsibility over your life takes courage. It's going to take like something out of you that you didn't even know you had inside of you. It's going to take every single day doing the things that you don't want, whether you feel like it or you don't. Right. And so I believe that that's one of the most important things like in life is really taking charge and taking ownership, whether like no matter what happens, no matter what happens. And the biggest thing to get clear on is that life is going to happen. Things are going to come up. In, 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 the, in the pursuit of your goals and your dreams, so much stuff is going to come up. You know, it's like for even for Aubrey and I in our past five years of doing Herbalife, like many people, for instance, would love to have the paycheck that we have, would love to have the lifestyle that we have. However, what people don't understand and what people don't see are all of the ups and the downs that we've had inside of the, our last five years. People may see us and because they see our social media may think that life has been sunshine and rainbows, just incredible, which it hasn't. There's been many lows and there's been many highs. However, one thing is for certain is that we always took responsibility no matter what the circumstances, no matter what was going on every single day. Every single day we acted uh, in, 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 like, in power of our life. And it's just like every single day we get the opportunity to choose what kind of life we want to have. And you either, you have two choices. You either get to play a victim of life and say, why is this happening to me? Why is life this way? Like, and blah, 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 and give yourself a pity party or you take responsibility, get stuff done, and you just go after it and you go after it with everything that you got. So that's Fire, victor or victim, I like that one. So. We're going to get a few shares. If you can't share because you're at work, put it in the chat bar, uh, and we'll read a few off. Let's see who we got really plugged in. I'm loving everybody focused, really, really going in. Uh, let's get my boy Keeper, King Fit Dad. Give us a takeaway. What you got, Keith? I took you off mute. Oh, my biggest takeaway would be, I would say, don't start them. Uh, don't start the next month until your previous month is finished. Big, big one. Love it, man. Everything about preparation fired up. Let's get next. Myra, Myra, what do you got for us? Give us a nugget. Hey, what's up guys, man, that like, I've heard that the video that you shared today before. And like, I think it always goes back to like preparing your day, you know, like you, you are huge on talking about like how you set your day. Can you hear me? Okay, how you say your day, you know, the day before, and then sometimes it's like, oh, I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it. And I noticed that the times that I've done it, like, your day does run smooth. And, you know, it's just a matter, for me, it's just a matter of, like, getting into the, the flow of, like, always doing that, because then otherwise you're, like, all over the place. And then another one is, like, you we really have to get out, out of the way, you know? Like, we are probably, like, the one of the things that holds us most – back the most you know we hold ourselves like our thoughts or limited beliefs and then if we just 
you know, we were to remove that and like be like a newborn and where anything and everything is possible. Like just imagine like the possibilities of like what you could become. So those are my takeaways. I love it. Getting ourselves out of the way because it is possible and understanding that you're going to be your biggest challenge. Not a bad, like you're bad, but to know who to work against. I love it. Great stuff. Next, let's get Veronica, Pittsburgh, California. If you didn't know there was one, I did it, right? Veronica, give us your biggest takeaway. I already took you off mute. Well, my biggest takeaway was like planning your day. That's what I struggle with. Um, when I started doing Herbalife, I noticed that I had like no control. Um, I used to be the person that wakes up and figures out how I was feeling and that will determine what I was going to do that day. But now I'm, I'm like planning, like starting to plan my day and it feels much better. I feel like I have more control over my day. So that was I love it. Instead of letting feelings determine actions, letting plans determine actions. And then you guys, I'm going to tell you guys, because I got a little sinus thing going on in my front of my head, my throat, and now it's in my nose, right? Monday is leg day. Sinuses and leg day don't mix, right? They don't mix. It doesn't even really mix with if you're feeling 100%, right? But actions on plans happen together then midway through i'm feeling like it kind of not kind of so but glad it's over with so i love that so one more we got alexis from tampa she put my biggest takeaway was to write out your day the night before to set up your day correctly also to make your health a priority and have balance of working your butt off but still taking care of yourself so you can enjoy your success absolutely you guys fired up and uh i'll give you guys just a little insight because he touched on it. he said in the beginning when you're a rookie when you're new to anything, you've got to make up an effort what you like in skill. But then he talks about, you know, as you get better over time, you're going to get better in your numbers. So I'll just give you an example. Roxy and I, our average of volume last year versus this year for all of our Herbalife distributors is higher than it was last year. Our average last year versus the year before is higher than it was. Why? We're still putting in the effort every single day, but you get better. So your effort becomes more effective because of the skills you pick up. So now people will see us, right? And I'm sure people in our building, people around, they're like, what do they do? You know, they don't know what we do, right? Because we don't go up in there. We always have our button on, right? But they don't know a lot of Herbalife distributors here. It's either retired people or athletes here or some actors. But we've gotten better so it doesn't look like the hard work that they're used to, right? Because we did that in the beginning to become more skillful. And then with more skill combined with time, you become more effective. So this is what people talk about when they're like, yo, I want to grind in your 30s, or is it grind in your 20s, build in your 30s, chill in your 40s. You've heard of that, right? Now, we're not going to chill in our 40s. We're going to keep building. But the thing is, the 15-hour days, right, they don't have to be forever, right? But in the beginning, they do. In the beginning, they do, because you've got to make up what you lack in skill with effort to build the skill. And you'll get to a point where, you know, an eight-hour day might kill your 15-hour day in the past because you're more than twice as good now. But you've got to be willing to go through those 15-hour days to build that skill. That's the point most people don't, aren't willing to do. They're not willing to go through that point to get good enough to be able to do it the way they want to do it. They stop halfway through, and then they start something new, which requires the same law of effort and time, they do it halfway through, they stop. Then they start something new, they do it halfway through, they stop. They start something new, that's why. That's the secret. If you really caught what I just shared, you will be successful as an Herbalife distributor or in your health and wellness journey because the same thing go with your physical health results. You guys, it's all about effort over time, making up in skill, in effort until you become skillful enough. Let's get it, y'all. I'm going to take everybody off mute. Ice coffee, protein out today. You can do a hot or cold, yeah. right? So it's protein coffee. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's go. Fired up, y'all. Have a great Monday. Peace.